What's up, Buff Dudes and Girls? We are here in the gym for phase two of the dumbbell only program. And this phase, it's a little bit more intense. The first phase, more beginner. We went over mobility stuff in the beginning. We really kind of broke down the exercise to hopefully make you guys a little bit more comfortable with the movements and, and kind of give you some tips or, or hints and kind of like try to let you know what to do, maybe what not to do on some of this. But this one, phase two, it's a little bit more intense. The volume's going up. It's gonna be four sets, eight reps on all the exercises. Plus we're adding some isolation movements um, on the back end of the workout. So we're gonna be starting off with squat thrusters. Now this is a full body workout. Uh, this phase is full body. So get ready to get your heart rate up, to feel a little bit winded, but also feel damn good after your workout's done. So here we go. Without further ado, let's get this started. Yeah. Here we go, the first exercise. And a couple things to keep in mind when performing the squat thrusters is you're going to be squatting down in like a standard squat. So you really do wanna keep a pretty uh, comfortable positioning in your toes. So just let them flare out like you would normally and you're gonna have your knees follow your toes at all times. So when you squat down, you're really gonna try as hard as you can to get your hip crease below knee. So you get a nice, nice deep squat. And uh, keep a vertical torso at least as much as you can. Hopefully you've been practicing on that mobility so you'll be able to a little bit easier. So once you get in this position, as you can see, the, the dumbbells are placed right at the shoulders here. And it's a, it's a pretty deep squat. And this is the beginning position here and you're in the stretched position, the stretch reflex position where um, essentially you're pulling those muscles like a rubber band. They're ready to explode. They have all that energy conserved up. And so you're going to use that energy to thrust upward and explode to the top position. So this is the full extension position here. So body's straight and you got your, uh, your elbows extended and your shoulders are balancing the weight. Once you reach this position, you're going to slowly let it down and then squat at the same time to get right back down to that beginning position and start again. So you get in this position, you can see, really try to push with your midfoot to the top position. Try not to get on your toes or the, your heel too much. So if you get on your heel too much, you're gonna feel a little bit unbalanced. Same thing with the balls of your feet too. That means you're rocking too far forward and you can put unnecessary pressure on your knees there. So really try to push that midfoot in this position, pushing upward and extending in the shoulders and elbows to reach that top position and then go right back down to bottom position. It's a pretty, energy consuming exercise. It's gonna take a lot. This is full body. It's your legs, your shoulders. You know, you're kind of using everything to get um, this full motion down. So practice with it. Uh, maybe do it without weights first and then slowly work up to something you're comfortable with and go from there. So after this, rest time is gonna be about 60 to 90 seconds or so. And then after that, ready for the next set. And as we talked about before in the intro, the volume is going up. So it's gonna be four sets rather than three. So making it a little bit more difficult for you guys um, but that's what it's all about, right? Okay, now I'm gonna catch my breath. Rest times. I'm gonna flex while I do it. Keep the blood flowing, you know? And then go on to the next set. We just got done with squat thrusters and now we're moving on to commando rows. Now this is a little bit more of a back intensive exercise, but you'll probably feel it more in your core because what's gonna happen in this exercise is you're gonna actually have to keep a plank position. You're starting in the push-up position and you're gonna keep your feet very wide. The wider your feet, the more stable you're gonna be. As we've discussed in the prior videos, having a good basis support is gonna stabilize you through a lot of motions, and this is no exception in this one. So you want a really wide stance, and uh, you're gonna keep the dumbbells in your hands just about shoulder width there, so you're gonna feel very stable. But in that position, you're gonna row one dumbbell up, back down, and then alternate between each side. So each time you row, it's gonna stress the core, it's gonna have to balance you because it's being thrown off and it's gonna be in a position of uh, instability there. So it's gonna really have to engage. And much like we were saying in the previous videos, whenever you're doing a single arm row, you don't wanna turn your body with the weight. You really wanna keep that trunk facing forward at all times so you really can engage the lats properly. The floor press, that is what we're doing on the floor because we're gonna be doing this exercise right from this position. Well, maybe not right from this position, but something very similar. Now the floor press, if you're not familiar with it, it is essentially like a bench press. It's actually the beginning evolution of the bench press. So the floor press pretty much started it all. And what you're gonna be doing, as the name explains, is lying on the floor. And once you get in the lying position, you're gonna keep your legs straight out in front of you. So if they're flat. So there's no kind of pressing in the legs. There's no hip motion. It's pretty much just all upper body. And what you wanna do is once you get in the position, the back of your upper arm is gonna be placed 
right on the floor. So that's kind of the starting position with your upper and lower arm at a 90 degree angle there and be pressing just like a normal press. But the differences between a floor press and a regular bench press is that it's limiting your range of motion. It's really only working on the pretty much the back end of a bench press. So the top position there. So you're only really going from this position to the top. Now this is strengthening you in that position. So let's say you're struggling in a bench press going with heavy weight from the bottom position to about halfway up. So usually that can happen. You can kind of get that weight about halfway up and you can kind of struggle the latter half of that motion. So the floor press thankfully is introduced then to strengthen you in that latter half of that motion with the triceps, the chest, and the front delts really involved in that position there. So it strengthens you and gets you better at the bench press. So these are pretty much very good to introduce if you're struggling in that um, range of motion there. But they're also good in general just to kind of switch things up a little bit. So we're gonna try these out, see how they, how they feel here. And sometimes can be difficult getting the weight into position. So what you're gonna be doing is putting the dumbbells just like this. And when you lay back, you're gonna be using your elbows kind of to leverage them back. So you can kind of hear and you can just lie straight back. And it should go right into position. So now the back of the arms are in place. And you can tell, just like in a bench press, the elbows are about a 45 degree angle to your torso there. And then you want everything flat on the ground and just be pressing straight up into position and slightly together. So down nice and slow and then press in an explosive manner. So now you gotta be careful when you lower it down because if you go too fast, you're gonna knock the back of your arms and it's not gonna feel so good. So make sure it's nice and slow and controlled, touch the back of your arms and then press the top position there. Make sure the shoulders are depressed. So you don't wanna be shrugging them up like this. You wanna keep them down and back and then press. So you get that maximum effort in that chest. And then when you're done, pretty much the same motion, just lay them straight back down and it's very simple. So that was the floor press. And that was the first set. We got three more sets. Get a little break, then we're gonna do the next three sets. Get a nice chest workout. We are on to the last compound exercise, and it's gonna be for the shoulders, and this is gonna be the hang clean press. Now, if you're not familiar with the uh, a clean motion, it's essentially taking an, uh, an Olympic standard uh, barbell into position, the clean position here. Of course, we're gonna be using dumbbells. You can still do it, it's just gonna be a little bit different than you would say if you compete in the Olympics. Obviously, you wouldn't be using dumbbells, but in this case, is an excellent motion because it's gonna get external rotation in the shoulders. You're gonna be in that clean position. You're gonna be catching it, so that way it's right into the pressing position, and then you're gonna press from there. So it's in a hang position, meaning it's not coming from the floor. You're actually just keeping it right here, and then you're gonna clean it, and then you're gonna press it. So hang, clean, press. Now, there's a few things you keep in mind when doing this uh, exercise. There's gonna be a little bit of hip extension in here. Now, this is typical when you're performing it with a barbell. Um, so the hip extension is going to create a little bit of energy and extra momentum to get the weights into place. And it's also gonna be, if you're familiar with like an upright row or a high row, and me rowing the dumbbells, and as soon as it gets to about shoulder or clavicular portion, you're gonna roll the wrists, and it's gonna catch right in the shoulder girdle here, and then you're gonna press from there. So as you can tell, the palms are facing me, and you're gonna push back in the hips, so you're flexing the hips, slight bend in the knees, once that reach position, you're gonna extend in the hips and pull it into position. So it's pretty fast motion. And once you get in this position, as you can tell, the knees are bent and the hips are flexed again. And then you're gonna slightly push press the top position, bring it down and then back down to bottom position. Push the hips back, slight knees, bend in the knees, explode, catch, press. You can tell the elbows are running high in this position. So if you want to practice that, that's the high row. So you're pushing your hips back, flexing in the hips, also a little bit in the knees, and then going into that full extension. So it's a quick motion, but in this case, when you do that, you're flipping your wrists so that way you catch it right to your shoulders here, and then pressing up from there. So that is the hand clean press with the dumbbells. A little break, and then we're gonna be doing the working sets, which is gonna be four sets of eight repetitions. 
I guarantee when you try these out, it is gonna be one of your favorite shoulder exercises because it really makes them work. But you do wanna be careful with them. Take it light, get the motion down first, feel comfortable with it because it is a little technical. Um, and since it is dumbbells, obviously your arms are working independently from each other. It's gonna feel a little bit more unstable, so just kinda get the motions down, keep it light, get that nice wrist flip, make sure you feel comfortable with it, the elbow's high and catching, and then the press from there. But once you get it down, you're gonna love them. So we are on to the isolation work, and the first one is gonna be the skull crutches, and I'm sure Everyone is very familiar with the skull crusher. It's, it's, not a, it's not a rare exercise. It's definitely gonna be isolating and working on the triceps. Now this one, it is gonna be dumbbells, so it makes it a little bit different, maybe a little bit more difficult, and maybe a little bit more easy, depending on kind of what you're doing with. Sometimes when you're using just a bar, either a straight bar or like an easy curl bar, um, that position can be difficult because your wrists are gonna be forced to be turned all the way outward. With the dumbbells, you can keep them in a little bit more of a comfortable position. So you can kind of have it in a neutral position where the palms face each other. And then as you press up, you can add a little bit of extra motion, like a rotation in there, or you can keep it in kind of that hammer position there and go straight up and straight down. Um, now, since they are working independently from each other, it's gonna be a little bit different as far as your stability goes, but that's good, right? Because you're working a little bit harder in this exercise. So this one is really just focusing on elbow extension um, and coming all the way down. When you flex the elbows, it's gonna get that nice stretch in the triceps. And the farther down you go, the more you're gonna feel that stretch. And it's predominantly me working kind of on the long head of the tricep there, although all three heads of the triceps are gonna be working. Um, so here we go. We're gonna be doing this. You're gonna be just lying flat on a bench. Uh, Pressing up the top position. Now this is the starting position here. So as you can tell, it's just about shoulder width. And what you're gonna be doing is bringing the dumbbells right down beside your ears. Now you can move them slightly back too, depending on how your elbows feel. So sometimes when you bring them here, it's gonna feel like there's a pinch in your elbow. So if you kind of adjust them back a little bit, it can relieve that slightly, or even slightly flare your elbows out, depending on how, what you're doing with. But once you get in that position, you're gonna extend. Just like so, and I'm adding a little bit of extra motion in there, as you can tell, I'm just twisting them outward. You don't have to do that, but it just adds a little extra difficulty in there. Let's get that right back down. Oh, there we go. Just completed the first set of the Skull Crushers. It feels good. I love the Skull Crushers. Badass name, badass exercise. It's kind of a win-win. Here we go, still working on the arm pump. We got the supinating bicep curls next. And with these ones, it's very simple. It's just working on elbow flexion um, and extension for the eccentric contraction. But with the supinating, uh, if you're not familiar with supination, is just turning the palms upward. Now, supination is a very important component of a bicep movement. So there is, of course, a main component of the arm flexion, which is going to work the biceps. But supinating, too, is really going to engage the biceps as well. So pairing those two up is very important to get a really good workout for the biceps and a good pump, too, because that's what we're all, we're all about, right? So I'm gonna grab the dumbbells here. Oh. I'm not gonna go too heavy. You wanna make sure they're comfortable enough to keep that proper positioning. And what I mean by that is when you're curling, you don't wanna lift your elbows up too high and you don't wanna swing them too much either. So you wanna keep the elbows um, usually at a, a pretty stable position, pretty much right at your side there. So as you flex and the elbows, you can supinate at the same time. And as you can see, it engages the biceps pretty well there. Keep a nice fluid motion on the way up, nice squeeze and a nice slow motion on the way down for that eccentric contraction and control there. <sighs> Excellent exercise to really isolate those biceps. Now, of course, as you, I'm sure you know or are aware of, the triceps it is a larger muscle group. Um, it is about two thirds of the arm. So what you wanna really try to do is make sure you're always pushing a little bit more weight with your triceps. Make sure your triceps are gonna be stronger. You're paying a little bit more closer attention to them because it's so easy to do bicep curls and what happens is you get a little bit um, out of proportion there. And so your biceps could be really strong and your triceps could be weak. And so make sure you always really pay attention to that. And if you're pushing up, you know, 20 pounds or so, 30 pounds on skull crushers, and then all of a sudden on bicep curls, you're hitting 50s pretty easily. There's some signs there that you maybe need to give the tricep a little bit more love. And the good thing about that is it will, in the long run, make your arms look bigger. Even though, of course, when you flex, 
you're always paying attention to the bicep, but you gotta remember that tricep does a lot of work too, not only for the visuals, but a lot for the function of a lot of different exercises there. So we got the first set done. We only have three sets of these isolation exercises, but we are going a little bit higher in repetitions, uh, 10 reps instead of eight. And the rest times are a bit shorter here. So we're gonna bust these out. So this is the last exercise of this workout. It's gonna be the Superman's. Now this is predominantly working on your lower back, um, but you will feel it kind of in just the whole core because your abs will be tensed as well to kind of uh, bring your spine through the motion. And it's bringing your spine into an extens extension. So of course flexion is through here and extension is going the opposite way. So you're bringing your bottom half up and your top half up. Um, so essentially you're balancing kind of a little bit more in just the midsection here. So your hips and, and your uh, sternum is gonna be you know, planted firmly against the floor. And you're gonna be slightly bringing your legs up. So you feel a little bit in your glutes too as you bring your legs up and then of course your, your hands up, a little bit of your the upper torso up as well, uh, which you'll see here in a second. But once you do that, what you wanna do is keep a nice fluid motion and you're extending in that back you're lifting up, kind of pushing your sternum against the floor. And even if you bring your sternum slightly off, if you're really flexible, that's okay too. As long as you feel that nice engagement in the back muscles through there. So we're gonna kind of go through this and uh, you'll get to see the motion here. Thankfully, it's a very simple motion. We're gonna be doing three sets of 15 reps. So you'll really feel it in the rector spinae, which is those muscles that you feel right in your lower back there. And uh, they really help stabilize and support your spine there. So making those nice and strong is gonna be important for a lot of other lifts too. So that's why something like this can be very important to keep in a program and perform in general. So that way your back is always gonna be supported accordingly along with, uh, you know, obviously the engagement and the strength of your abdominal muscles too. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but that's why we do include the Supermans because they are very good and very important. So we've got two more sets and that will conclude this workout. There we go, that wraps up day one of phase two. Thank you so much for joining along. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're trying to obviously, as you can tell, keep these pretty informational, kind of a little bit more tutorial based, but obviously add some actual exercise and workout involved too. Maybe a little extra motivation if you guys are following along, but please join us for day two of phase two that's coming out soon. And as always, as you know, stay buff.